Hello, joining myself and Justin Haywald here at the GameSpot stage at E3 2016 is Chuck from the Coalition, here to talk some Gears of War 4. Chuck, how are you doing today? Great. You excited to show off more Gears? <laughs> I'm super excited to show off more Gears. Thanks for having me. So how has the show been so far? How was the reception to what we saw at the press conference? Oh, really good. I mean, uh, people were very excited about all the stuff they saw yesterday. They're excited about the crossplay and about uh, XPA as well. So, uh, yeah, we're just showing a little bit uh, of a different campaign look inside of our uh, booth here at the show. And, and, and especially coming off of Gears of War Remastered and now going into Gears of War 4, did, did that help energize you guys going into this? Yeah, I mean, we really used uh, Ultimate Edition as an opportunity for the team to, to sort of figure out how Gears works. I mean, taking over for Epic was a big job, obviously. I mean, Gears of War is an iconic franchise, so for us, we really had to learn how to do it right before we did a difference. So that's what Ultimate Edition was for us, and we were super excited about the reception for that. And then, obviously, after the stuff we showed last year, there's big expectations. So, yeah, it was kind of nice to be able to start unveiling that stuff and, and giving the, the fans a chance to see what's uh, really going on. And of course, the Xbox Play Anywhere and the Crossplay, yeah. how much work is going on under the hood to be able to make that work? Uh, a lot. I mean, it's an initiative for all of uh, Microsoft, and we're really proud to be a part of that. So for us, uh, XPA is, is super exciting. I mean, as a gamer, I'm really excited about that, right? It's, you know, you, you play your game, and now it goes with you everywhere. So, you know, your save game, your progress, your achievements all travel with you on whatever platform you're on. So that's really fun. Mm -hmm. uh, you in the press conference, we saw a little bit of kind of like this incredible dust storm. Yeah. Are they dynamic? Are they um, planned? Are they, if, if I play the same level again, is it going to be the same dust storm in the same spot, or is it going to change a little no, bit? No, we had to practice a lot for that <laughs> demo because it is a system. It's not a scripted experience. Am I okay? Oh, yeah. okay. Uh, yeah, it's, a, it's not a demo. It's a scripted experience. So. Uh, you know, it changes every single time you play it, so it's really unpredictable, but that's what's cool about it, is that as you play through, uh, the experience that you're going to have might be completely different than the experience that I'm going to have, and I think that creates a lot of discussion and a lot of fun between the players. How random can it get? Surely there must be some kind of boundaries on how far it goes. Yeah, there's things that you can interact with, and that's part of the discovery of each of the encounters, which is a lot of fun as well. You can play through and not get any of the interactive stuff that you saw yesterday, like the car or the pipes or, or any of that stuff happening, but... Uh, uh, there are other things, obviously, that you can do inside there. And the wind affects everything, so it affects the projectiles as well. So in the, in the demo yesterday, you saw the saw blades from the buzzkill flying off in different directions, and the same thing with the drop shot. You really have to then uh, sort of determine how much the wind is going to affect it. And can the wind be used in multiplayer, or is it just a single player? No, it's only single player. And, you know, unfortunately, multiplayer fans are really finicky about the <laughs> things that impact their experience. So it's, you know, we might have... Uh, one or two multiplayer levels for social play that it will use wind as, a, as uh, one of the things that you can experience out of there, but certainly not for competitive play. Mm. You know, because Gears is a franchise that, that is very well beloved, that it has really hardcore fans, and, and you guys are coming into it as, as a new studio, are there things that are kind of sacred that you felt like this has to be the same, this has to be really authentic to Gears, and were there any things that you were like, we want to change this, we want to make this better? Yeah, I think with every game, I mean, whenever you're going to do a sequel for a product, you have to try and move the needle a little bit and make your fan base a little bit uncomfortable. <laughs> but for us, it was really important to make sure, again, that we did it right before we did it, it, before we did it different. So uh, because we were on a new engine, which is the Unreal 4 engine, uh, we actually had to rebuild most things from the ground up. So we were able to like, create technology that allowed us to do a mirror, pixel for pixel comparison between uh, Gears 3 and what we were building in Gears 4. So it's a very authentic experience to Gears, and then we started to tweak it and say, okay, what are the things that we can make different, like the close cover combat or the wind effects or things like that. So it's a little bit here, a little bit there, but you try and stay true to what the fans really love, and trust me, Gears fans are incredibly passionate and they <laughs> give us tons of feedback. So we have a lot of that stuff taken into account and then uh, we sort of move on from there. Mm -hmm. What was it like creating a new story? I mean, obviously the big reveal from the Microsoft press conference is that we saw Marcus Phoenix is back, yeah. Daddy's home. Yeah. What was it like kind of coming up with a new story for these characters as well as forging your own? with new characters. Yeah, it's, you know, it's really exciting because uh, the first trilogy really finished, you know, it finished with the conclusion. I mean, all the emotions gone, all the locusts are gone. So it was really interesting to sit and think about where do you take the story from there? Uh, a couple of things that we talked about was where you could go with it. And knowing that, you know, now that Microsoft owns the IP and we know that we're going to be doing more of these and it's, a, it's an IP we're going to invest in, uh, it gave us a lot of uh, leeway to be able to go in a lot of different directions. So we plan not just for this game, but for further down the road. So we're really able to do a lot more with the story than we would have otherwise if you don't know if you're going to be doing a sequel later on. So it must be us, reassuring. it's really exciting. 
It's reassuring. It's exciting. It's a little bit scary because, again, these are new characters, right? People love Marcus and they love Baird and they love Cole. And now we've got to get them to love JD and Kate and Dell and everybody else that we introduce. So that's challenging, but it's fun. Yeah. How, how's the reception been to the new characters? So far, really good. I mean, uh, and I expected people just to love JD, but through the playthroughs we've shown and the demos we've done today, I've had people say, oh, I love Dell and I love Kate and, and she's my favorite character. So that's really fun. And, and to be able to create a diverse group of characters is, you know, uh, it's just great for gaming and it's great for the franchise. And that's really what Gears has always been about. It's always been a really diverse, uh, interesting group of players. Yeah, was there any apprehension about introducing, you know, especially a girl into something which is very traditionally ma male-centric and Really? Male a girl? <laughs> you said that, not me. No, I mean, Gears has always had really strong female characters, right? There's been Anya, there's been Sophia, Alex, Bernie. I mean, it's really not uh, something new for Gears at all, so we're really proud to, to keep that tradition going, and I think uh, what we're really excited about is, is this is as much Kate's story as it is JD's story, and I think that's what's really going to be fun for fans to, to uh, discover as they go through and play the game. I mean, she's really a big part of this, and uh, I'm now I know what's going to happen, so I'm super <laughs> excited and anticipating what the reaction is going to be from all the fan base. But you we're, can spoil it for you. you can just I'm not going to spoil no. it for anybody. No, there's been too many spoilers for E3 already, so <laughs> I'm going to keep this one to myself. What was it like putting your, putting your own stamp on Sarah? Because the, the planet is completely different. Yeah. Now. Uh, it's tricky, right? Again, you know, you think about uh, what's going on with the planet after all of the natural resources. I mean, think about what would happen to Earth if suddenly all the gas was gone. Chaos. I mean, obviously we wouldn't be able to get, get home from <laughs> E3, but <laughs> beyond that, I mean, there could have a lot of different impacts, and that's where we came up with the wind flares and stuff like that. So, the, you know, the makeup of the world has changed. It's obviously reclaiming itself from, from 14 years of war and then the 25 years that are in between. So it's a really, it's a familiar environment, but it's also different. And uh, the way that you learn about the, the outsiders and the way that they live their lives, as well as the cog rebuilding, all that plays a huge part in the story. Uh, what was it like trying to build a story with all that tension between these two factions and then bringing in, of course, the swarm, these new enemies that you guys created? Yeah, it's been great. I mean, uh, you know, the original Gears, was a very distinct story and they had the stranded and the difference between the outsiders and the stranded is the stranded were left by the cog right they set off the light mass bombs and and they were just out there which is why they're called the stranded obviously uh, outsiders chose not to be a part of the cog so when the world started rebuilding after the war you know most of the population was wiped out and uh, those that were left in the cog had to rebuild so they became very protective you know and it's oh we don't want you to do these things we don't do this everybody needs to be safe and we need to rebuild the population well it's just like it is in in our lives, right? We don't want the government telling us what to do all the time. So there's a certain faction that wants to live outside that, and that's where the outsiders came from. So that tension between those two play a big part in the story, and I think that's sort of the catalyst for what lights the spark for, for the story. Let's talk a little bit about multiplayer. Rod announced at the press conference, Horde 3.0. It's back. What's different? What can you tell us? Uh, I can tell you a little bit about it. It's going to be, uh, there are going to be some classes in it. There's going to mm -hmm. be... Uh, it is it's built off the back of, of Horde 2.0, so it's a bit odd that people go, well, there's been five Gears of War, but <laughs> it's only Horde 2. Not every Gears had Horde in it. So uh, for us, we're really excited about it because it's a familiar but different take on it, and we think it really moves the, the ball down the field a lot in terms of what the experience is going to be in. And again, like every part of Gears, there are passionate campaign players, there are passionate uh, competitive players, but the Horde players... I got to tell you, uh, emails and, and twi <laughs> the, the Twitter messages I get is always about horde, horde, horde. So it was super exciting to be able to tell fans that it's back. And of course, over the next few months, as we get closer to launch, we'll be able to start revealing a bit more about what's going to happen inside of Horde. I mean, that literally defined that type of gameplay. When we talk about swarms of enemies, we call it horde mode. Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, for Gears, there's really two things that I think define Gears, and that's co-op play and horde mode. So we're really excited to have both those in and have them be a significant part of the experience. Is co-op mode the best way to play the single player? I think so, but that's because I'm not a very good player. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what's really interesting about that, though, is that uh, you've seen, well, if you come by the booth, you'll see the Pouncer, for example, in action. And that's one of the characters that we created, one of the enemy classes that we created to be specifically a co-op uh, enemy. Mm. So we built some of the mechanics inside of the game, we built some of the enemies inside of the game to be co-op specific to really take advantage of that. So for us we always say that, that co-op isn't the icing, it's the cake. So it's really a core to what the experience is. So when we build everything we think about co-op first and then we build out from there. So if you're playing in single player and you come up against the Pouncer, 
are you really going to struggle or is it kind of uh, or is it adapted a little bit if you're playing it's both? adapted the ai understands the situation and it'll help you out especially if you get pounced because the pouncing is interactive and you get stuck <laughs> on the ground in the different modes you can get out of it when you get into hardcore and insane yeah <laughs> you get pounced you're not getting out so so you guys are aiming for 30 fps single player 60 fps multiplayer that's correct what does 60 bring to the multiplayer gears well it brings a you know it brings a fluidity that i think is expected in competitive multiplayer games and for us that's been great i mean what we do again passionate fan base uh we weren't so arrogant that we're going to go off and do this without consulting the fan base so what we've done along the way is we've actually brought in pro players multiple times to give us feedback both on how it feels on the new weapons on the new levels uh on the new game modes so we've we, you know we announced things like escalation as a new competitive esports mode and the feedback uh from the competitive players and the professional players has been really great and they've helped really shape the direction of where uh multiplayer is going so speaking of uh, esports, professional players, obviously Microsoft announced the the new arena for Xbox Live. Yeah. Is Gears going to be taking part in that? Yeah, we'll take part of all the obviously all the first party initiatives. Yes. So for us, we're really excited about it. anytime we can get the platform to take something <laughs> off our plate. Uh, that's really exciting. And and when platform does it, it means it's going to be something that's going to be able to be used by everybody, which is which is even better, right? When you have to roll your own solution, it tends to be specific to what your game is. So having platform really be dedicated to that, and having Microsoft. Uh, you know, take esports seriously as uh, you know, trying to make Xbox One the the premier platform for esports is really exciting for us. Was it difficult to? Um, did you were esports always in mind? And I know you remember. I remember with. Um uh, Gears Remastered, they had, you guys had like some kind of spectator mode or some kind of yeah. definite esports uh, built in initiatives for esports. Basically. Yeah, and uh, it's funny because Gears is al it was actually one of the original esports games and it just didn't really get the support uh, that it needed to grow at the same rate as everything else so we sort of looked at that and again small but very passionate fan base said please take esports seriously so again you know we really spent a lot of time talking to our fans and getting feedback from them and and so you did see it in ultimate edition where you had a spectator mode we've got two now inside of uh, uh, Sorry, I call it Sparta, which is the code <laughs> name. But it's, uh, inside of Gears 4. And that's really going to be great for esports because you'll be able to set up cameras. You'll be able to switch a lot faster. And one of the things that I think is they'll make uh, Gears a really watchable esport event. And when you think about sports, to me, uh, being a huge sports fan, that ability to be able to see the strategy and the gameplay play out in front of you as opposed to always just seeing it from the, from the character's perspective that helps you understand more what the strategy and the tactics that are taking place over the course of the event is. So... Yeah, we take that stuff really seriously, and, and we'll continue to iterate and improve on that and release more features as we go. I hate to go off topic, but I, I love it when people mention the, the code names for things. Yeah. <laughs> like, Sparta is such a, it, it's a normal term, I think, for something like this, but where, where did you guys come up with that a name? Why Sparta? Uh, you know, it's it's just part of what Microsoft is about. We use we use code names <laughs> for everything. I mean, you know, was Windows 95 was called Chicago. Uh, every single project that I've worked on since there. It, in fact, it's very difficult to be an employee at Microsoft, <laughs> to be honest with you, because you'll be in a meeting and they'll mention all these different code names. And if you're not in the know, it's really hard to understand what's going on. So it's just, it's, you know, I, as you saw this week, uh, leaks happen, and I think when you leak a code name, people don't really know what it, because it's not necessarily associated with whatever the project is. So for that, it's a way to keep it safe, I think, more than anything. So when you're moving between demo stations, do your handlers have a, a code name for you? It's like Big Bird is on the move. No, not me, <laughs> definitely. Ogre, it would be Ogre if it was anything, so. <laughs> what was the thing that you were most excited about showing to fans and players? Oh gosh, that's a hard one. There's so much more to show. Uh, I think every time we get a chance to show something, it's exciting because mm. the team works so hard on it and they put so much love and effort into it. And you know, they're really up in, in Vancouver working hard on this, even <laughs> while I'm down here repping the, repping the product for them. Uh, yesterday was great because it was the first time to really get the fans got a chance to see what the wind flares are going to be like and all that uh, dynamic interaction in the world is all about. We showed that off earlier in some of the, the private press stuff, but it's the first time the fans have seen it. So. You know, it's fun because that's one of the things that's a little bit different about the game that's maybe not traditionally gear. So getting the reaction and seeing how fans are feeding back on that is really fun and exciting. So, I mean, you mentioned you mentioned the fans a lot. I mean, what what kind of feedback do you get? I mean, is it like a bunch of tweets? Is it detailed rundowns of things it's, they'd like uh, to have see? Have you seen Gears fans? <laughs> yeah. We are the only fan base that I know of where people get tattoos of the Crimson Omen on them, or Marcus, or any of the, the other iconography from, from Gears of War. It's, 
it's phenomenal. I mean, we have, they send us pictures of them using a lancer to cut their wedding cake. <laughs> I mean, it's insane. These are the most passionate fans I've ever seen. And it's so exciting because they are, what's great about it is they are, they're so passionate about, they want you to make the game better. And it's not necessarily they want you to do their ideas. They just want you to be as passionate about it as they are. And that's what's great about the coalition is you have a group of people up there that, that feel the same way about it, who take the responsibility of being the stewards of Gears of War very, very seriously. So all that comes into play. And for us, we think that by having that relationship with your fan base, it winds up giving you a much better product in the end. I actually have a Battletoads tattoo. Like, I'm just a really big no, fan. No, you do not. I can't show it, though, because oh, it's... Wait, no. what? <laughs> I, not safe for work. <laughs> oh, my God. Um, so what? <laughs> I can't even do that right now. Chuck, thank you so much for joining us. When can fans get their hands on Gears of War 4? Well, it ships on October 11th. Mm -hmm. And if you happen to go online at GearsOfWar.com and buy the Ultimate Edition, you actually get your hands on it four days early on October 7th. Are you going to have any more betas planned? Uh, no more betas, no. No. Yes, it's all, it's all... Hang well, on, sorry. I am English. No, sorry. No, I am English. I, I cannot I say beta. I understand. So, uh, no, from right now on, it's it's uh, spit and polish all the way to the end. So it's heads down for the team up there, and we're looking forward to to all the fans getting their hands on an opportunity to play all aspects of the game. So, awesome! Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. We'll be back again tomorrow for day two of E3. Seriously, you will not want to miss it. I've got the run sheet right here. Honestly, some of the games we've got on the stage tomorrow are incredible. But in the, in the meantime, head over to GameSpot.com. We have written previews, video previews, impressions of all the games here. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you tomorrow. You're watching the GameSpot stage, brought to you by Airheads.